Today we're going to talk about Microsoft Defender for SQL and an aspect of that, advanced threat protection. Um, adoption of the cloud is at an all-time high and hopefully with no end in sight, right? I work for Azure Data. Fingers crossed, everybody keeps moving to the cloud. Um, so managing a small fleet of databases um, in the cloud means understanding some new concepts and developing some new skill sets. Um, your job as a DBA, how many of you are DBAs? How many of you are developers? We'll get to you. Um, <laughs> Your job as a DBA is the av availability, stability, and security of the database, right? Does everybody that's a DBA understand that? You are the steward of the house of database, and everything that goes on there goes through you, okay? So the security is a huge piece of that. Um, so Microsoft actually now in the cloud offers a few tools that can make this easier for you to do your job. A little more, a little more automated, tools that, are, that can be proactive and reactive um, when it comes to bad actors, okay? I am Ree Merritt, uh, Senior Program Manager at Microsoft. Um, I am the MVP PG lead for the data platform. That means that I handle the relationship between the MVP program and the product group that builds the products. I run the Azure data community. Uh, are any of you in a member of your local user group? Nice, they may be in our network. Um, if you're not, why not? You get to have a little mini one of these once a month. It's fantastic. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So Microsoft Defender for the Cloud is a cloud-native application protection platform with a set of security measures and practices designed to protect cloud-based applications from various cyber threats. Um, Microsoft Defender for SQL is an important part of this offering. It includes functionality for um, surfeiting, surfacing and mitigating um, potential database vulnerabilities, um, detecting abnormal, abnormal activities, um, uh, and specifically abnormal, abnormal activities that could be perceived as a threat to your database, okay? Um, it provides a single go-to location for enabling and managing all of the capabilities that are built in. Okay, so the security strategy that's employed by Microsoft is multi-layered defense in depth approach from the outside in. Okay, this is a, this is a Microsoft graphic, I didn't make this up, okay? <laughs> so the first one is network security, right? That's the outside layer. It includes firewalls that prevent network access to the server unless access is specifically granted um, either to the IP or to um, like where the traffic is originating inside the Azure network, right? So it has to get through the network security layer first. Um, Azure management includes authentication and authorization, right? And that is the process of the system or the network determining that you are who you say you are and then giving you the permissions that have been based on who it's figured out that you are, right? Uh, threat protection includes um, auditing to allow you to monitor ongoing activity. Um, advanced threat protection works by analyzing logs ongoing um, to detect unusual or harmful attempts to access or exploit. Um, the information protection layer, um, this includes a lot of features like um, the transport layer security, which is um, encryption in transit, um, TDE or transparent data encryption, um, which is encryption at rest. That's the one probably the most of you, most of you have heard of, right, TDE? Um, always encrypted, which is encryption in use. And then key management with Azure Key Vault, dynamic data masking, and then finally data discovery and classification, which is currently in preview. And I can't tell you when it's gonna come out of preview because I asked the other day and they were like, uh, we can't say. So, um, which means they know, they just won't say. Oh, wait, Jakob's in the room. Hey, how's it going? So data discovery and classifications in preview. I don't know, let me check my notes later. I'll ask, if you really wanna know, we can check later. He's just on the team that does that. So. He would know. <laughs> so Microsoft Defender for SQL um, protects SQL Server in two different, two main ways, right? Um, providing a set of advanced SQL security capabilities, including um, SQL's vulnerability assessment and advanced threat protection. So the first one, vulnerability assessment. Um, 
This is an easy to configure service that will discover, track, and help remediate potential database vulnerabilities. I'll show you some pieces of this in just a little bit. Um, it's gonna provide you with some visibility into the security state of your databases. Um, and it's gonna provide you with actionable steps. Like when it identifies something, everything that it's gonna identify you, there's a link that says, hey, go learn more about this. Hey, learn how to mitigate this. Here's some steps that you can take, that kind of stuff. So we just don't go, hey, we found, we found an error, good luck, right? Okay, the second one is advanced threat protection. Um, this service detects anomalous activities indicating unusual or potentially harmful attempts to access or exploit your database. Um, it continuously monitors your database for suspicious activities and provides immediate security alerts on potential vulnerabilities. It looks for um, Azure SQL injection attacks and anomalous database access patterns. So even insider threats, right? Somebody's doing something that they shouldn't be doing or somebody's doing something that they don't normally do. Um, you know, internal bad actors, angry employees, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, advanced threat protection is the thing that we're going to cover most today. So, it provides a new layer of security. Um, it'll help you detect and respond to potential threats as they occur by providing the security alerts. We'll show you one of the alerts when we get there. Um, a user will receive an alert as soon as that potential threat has happened. Um, and then um, that alert's going to contain uh, very specific details about what has happened, what code got run on your system, what the, um, what the attack was, if it was actually attack. Um, and all of this is designed to make it easier for you as the DBA um, or even the Azure administrator um, to detect and respond to potential threats. Um, I, as a DBA, have never been a security expert, right? It, that wasn't my job. There, we had a whole other team that owned that. I had to know how to, to work with them, how to talk to them, how to know what it was they wanted to do to my system, or how to tell them what I needed, right? What access do I need? Who needs access to it? I, so I had to understand that. So this is now, um, it's not a skill set understanding it is, but it's now like this whole interface, these tooling systems um, that are pretty easy to use that you can click through and understand um, and dig into, turn off, turn on, that kind of thing. So it's just supposed to make it easier for you to do your job. How many of you work in, um, in systems that um, fall under some kind of compliance? And I don't just mean GDPR, like everybody in here falls under GDPR, right? So there's all kinds of security compliance, banking compliance, health compliance, all that kind of stuff. This is gonna make your life so much easier um, if that's the case. So um, one of the things that we're gonna talk about that, we'll, um, that I'll demo for you is a, a, a SQL injection attack, okay? So um, let me think. Everybody know what SQL injection is? It's when, it's when somebody attempts to push faulty SQL code into your database, right? So it's, um, and when I say faulty, as in, I mean, it's gonna work, it'll run, but you don't want it to run because that's not how your application is designed. Um, it is gonna uh, recognize anomalous database access and query patterns. Um, and so, for example, an abnormally high number of attempts at connection from a specific user or from a specific location or even from a machine that at some point has been um, accessed, right? Depending, I guess. Um, uh, or if somebody has tried a high number of things with it, like from the same location with a bunch of different credentials it's going through. So this is gonna detect that. Um, if a legitimate user is a legitimate user, so like one of even, you know, somebody on your team, a data analyst or whatever, if their machine at some point had been breached by you know, a whole host of things, um, Defender can help catch that and identify that for you, okay? So advanced threat, protect, advanced threat protection applies to um, Azure SQL database, Azure SQL managed instance, um, Synapse analytics, SQL server on 
Azure Virtual Machines, because that's not a mouthful, <laughs> and Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. OK. <laughs> um, let's, let's do um, just a little bit of demo here for you today. Give me just a second. So the reason I warn you that Buck Woody is coming is honestly because he built this app for me. It's C Sharp. It's nice and simple. Um, it um, doesn't have a UI or anything wrapped around it at this point. It's just designed to take in some code. And um, this little select statement here, um, we've, there's an equal statement, select where equal, and then we have a sales order number. We're going to grab the sales order number, and we're going to drop it into, um, into this space here, and it's going to return for us the purchase order number. That's what we want. That's what this is designed to do. Code works, right? Does exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, what we really are worried about is does the code do something that it's not supposed to do? OK, so I have a Jupyter Notebook here. And we have, it's connected to an Azure SQL database. Um, this is, you can see here's the statement that it's supposed to run. Simple statement, select the purchase order number, where the sales order number is the thing that we passed in. And you'll see here what it has returned is the purchase order number. Here's where it gets a little scary. If somebody passes in a value that I'm not anticipating, that's not a sales order number, in this particular case, if we're going to pass in where it equals buck or where one equals one, and of course, there's nothing in the sales order table that equals buck, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but where one equals one is always true. So let's drop that in here. Oh, there we go. OK. Where buck or one equals one, and then that little dash dash at the end of it. That's the really important part. Pay attention to that. Do you see what it's done? It's returned everything from the PO table. Why did it do that? Well, because where one equals one is always true. And that dash dash that's there at the end of the line is a code break. It says ignore everything else that's coming next. So when my application passed this information in, it passed in the dash dash just like as if it were a parameter and um, broke everything else after it. It essentially says ignore this. And so where one equals one, everything is true. It's the same as saying return everything from this table. And so let's see here, see where it pulled everything back, every PO. Now, so what? Somebody gets all of my PO numbers, right? How, how complicated is that? If they can get to this one, they can get to others. OK, so this is just a little quick. A little quick look. Here's where it gets even more dangerous. Let's add a union all statement to this. So I've now said um, pull everything back that's buck or one equals one. Again, true. Union all select email, email address from the customer table. And then I add that break the code line. So here we go. Everything that's true in the PO table, it returns all of that. And then it also returns every email address that's in the customer table. Do you see how this gets a little bit more serious with SQL injection? Always a little more serious. So at this point, they have now determined that your system is vulnerable, that you're not sanitizing your inputs. You see we get a little alert there. We detected anomalous security. Or we detected anomalous activity, big red band across it. Um, I'm going to get an email from the system. I'm going to get an email from our administrators. So we're going to pop here into the, um, um, into the Azure portal. I, OK. Um, we're going to pop here into the Azure portal. And we've got transparent data encryption, but we have a portal here or a window here for Microsoft Defender for SQL. So let's go in. First, we're going to take a look at the notifications, which is the one that we just got, right? Advanced Threat Protection Alerts 1. We're going to take a look at it. And you'll see here that it tells us uh, that it's potential SQL injection. That's the alert that we got. It says that it's high severity. Um, we're going to scroll down here just a little bit, view full details. It's going to take us in, and it is going to show us um, everything that we need to know about this particular code that was executed. Um, potential cause, a defect in the application code, 
right? Buck's code is defective. You can tell him I said that. Um, investigation steps, that is a link here that takes us to um, Microsoft Learn. It shows us exactly what code has been run, that through the alert, where's my mouse? Okay, there we go, sorry. Um, now, there's, uh, see the link at the bottom says next, take action. It's gonna take us through how can we mitigate this threat, and it's gonna give us some additional information. Now, it's not going to suddenly turn on a feature that sanitizes all of your inputs, but it's gonna tell you how you can learn more about how to sanitize your in, sir, uh, in, inputs. Um, but it, it walks you through and educates you on how to do it, or just as importantly, how you can educate your developers to do this. Um, so let's back out just a little bit. There we go, okay. Um, so I'm just in a dev environment. I actually don't have a ton of um, permissions in this particular environment. Um, but, um, let's, uh, okay, so, this is our vulnerability assessment finding. Let's take a look really quick that I mentioned earlier. So this particular one, um, the system has had a vulnerability assessment running on it and it's, it's got some recommendations for me on what it might be a problem as. And so like here it says, the DBO user should not be used. I can click into that and find out more about why it shouldn't be used. So in this particular case, this violates FedRAMP um, compliance which might be a US thing, I would imagine we love to name things Fed, right? So, <laughs> but if I want this alert to go away, not that I fix the alert, but this doesn't apply to me, right? That there's no reason I care about this one, I'm actually gonna approve that one as baseline, so it's not gonna alert anymore. So those of you who work in um, an area that has to do some kind of financial compliance or um, health compliance or anything, there's a whole host of compliance options that you can just turn on and it'll run and tell you that um, what you need to go in and fix before your audit. How many of you had to sit in a room with an auditor for a couple of days and prove negatives on your system? Like prove to me that you deleted that. What? Um, okay, sir. So, um, so again, we're here in the, um, the dev environment. Uh, we've, we've backed out, we're now at the um, Defender for cloud level, not just Defender for SQL level. Level, and um, it's given a. It, we we can get it to give us a security score, and it'll tell us here are some th things that you should change on your system that'll make you more secure. Like here, it says in, enable encryption at rest, or enable a few um, best security practices like multi-factor authentication. So um, I, this is if you have if you have Azure Portal access. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this, we're done with the, um, with the demo part. So, um, how many minutes do I have left? Like one, one, okay. So, um, I'll, I mean, I can take questions when we're done here if you want. Um, this is a from beginning to end kind of tool, right? It helps protect things in the database, it helps protect things as they're coming into the database. It can help protect things as they're going out of the database. It can make you look really smart. Right? You go to your bosses and go, oh, hey, you know, this thing's going on and here's what I've already done to mitigate it, that kind of thing. So um, I, I don't have official time for questions, but if you have questions for me when we're done, like in just a minute, I'm happy to answer or at least steer you in the right direction if I can't answer it. Um, but again, I'm Ree Merritt. And um, you can follow me on Twitter at Irish SQL. Um, if I don't, if you have a question for me that I didn't answer here, you're absolutely more than welcome to send me an email. And if I don't have the answer, I'll ask the security team to answer it for me, which is, you know, how we all work really well together. And then that's the session feedback QR code. And that's it. We're done. We're good.